Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be checking out the 2015 Chevrolet Trax. This is a small four-door crossover utility vehicle with seating for five. And this particular trim is the Trax LTZ. Up front you do have fog lights as well as body colored mirrors. Total MSRP as tested comes to 25905 Now checking out the trunk. Actually a pretty good size and you've got 60-40 folding rear seats. Uh, underneath here you've got the spare tire as well as some tools. The other cool thing is the front passenger seat folds flat so if you need to store something longer temporarily you can store something up to about 8 feet so that's a pretty cool feature. Okay let's have a look under the hood. Now the first thing you'll probably notice is the engine is a bit buried in here which kind of does make it a little bit more difficult to service as far as how far you've got to reach down in here uh, though that does keep the center of gravity of the engine a bit lower. You also do have this plastic engine cover but it can be removed uh, and that just simply gives you access to the spark plugs. Now checking for serviceability you've got your air filter here over on the left, your coolant reservoir, your windshield washer fluid, you've got your battery easy access on the driver's side. Uh, you've got your fuse box right here and your brake fluid reservoir. Then you've got your engine oil fill right down here and an engine oil dipstick. This is a 1.4 liter inline four cylinder turbocharged gasoline engine. It has dual overhead cams with variable valve timing on both the intake and the exhaust. It features a cast iron block which is becoming a bit more rare these days as aluminum is quite a bit lighter but it does have an aluminum head. The engine produces 138 horsepower at 4,900 RPM and 148 pound-feet of torque at 1,850 RPM, so you do get your peak torque fairly early on. So let's follow the path of the intake air. The air initially comes in up front here, where it then passes through the air intake filter. After passing through the filter, it then travels down to the turbocharger. After traveling through the inlet of the turbocharger, it passes down and then towards the passenger side of the vehicle to the intercooler. The air travels across the intercooler up front, then it travels back up, passes through the electronically controlled throttle body, and then into the plastic intake manifold you can see there, pretty common these days, and then into the engine, then after passing through it travels out the exhaust through the exhaust side of the turbocharger, and then out to the rear. Single exhaust pipe, very simple setup, travels to the rear, enters the muffler, and then out a single tailpipe. On this particular model, the power is sent through a 6-speed automatic transmission to the front wheels. 18-inch wheels with 215 over 55 Continental tires on all four wheels. Up front, 11.8-inch ventilated disc brakes matched with a McPherson strut-style suspension. Here you can see the lower control arm, the steering linkage, the anti-roll bar which matches up with the strut, and then behind that, the CV joint where you've got your drive axle coming in. In the rear, 9-inch drum brakes, this is becoming pretty rare in modern cars as they don't have quite the heat dissipation of disc brakes. This is matched with a torsion beam style suspension, separate spring and shocks. So here you can see the shock and spring, having them separate allows for a bit more room in the trunk. And then you can see in black going all the way across, that's the torsion beam connecting the two sides. So viewing the torsion beam from another angle, you can see if this side were to move up, it would rotate this torsion beam which goes all the way across, and then that would resist the motion of this rotating. All right, let's have a look at the interior. Keyless entry, so you've got the key fob to lock and unlock the vehicle. You can also remote start by holding this button right here. And once it is started, you can also lock and unlock the vehicle. Leather seats all around and electronically adjustable driver's seat. Okay, checking out the interior. Plenty of leg room and you can adjust the steering wheel so that you won't have any contact with your knee. You know, everything in here is pretty much plastic and hard touch, but you do have plenty of space for your legs. The seats, leather, the leather doesn't feel all that soft, but the seats are comfortable and they are well bolstered. Uh, the steering wheel here, leather wrapped, the leather is very soft on this, uh, and you do have plenty of controls on here, so you've got your cruise control. And now one of the things about this that's kind of interesting is how it works. Um, you can't press on this, though it looks like the whole thing's a button, it's only, only cancel is at the very bottom of this, and then turning it on and off is at the very top of this, and then you can't press on it on these sides, so just something to note. Um, it would, I guess, be kind of ideal if it was just one big button and you didn't have to worry about where to push on it. Uh, and then you have, you know, resume uh, or increase or decrease your speed. On the right, you've got your audio controls as well as your Bluetooth controls uh, for using your phone. 
the display up front. You've got your tack on the left and then this digital display which gives you your speed and your fuel. Also gives you, uh, you know, what gear you're in, what direction you're facing, how many miles, your trip computer. Uh, you don't have, it doesn't appear a coolant, uh, so you can't really tell what your engine temperature is. I think that'd be nice to know. Uh, you can check your average speed, how far you have until empty, and then the average fuel economy you've been getting. Now you do have power windows all the way around and power mirrors that you can adjust here. Now you've got your lights up here, so you've got automatic, or you can turn them on, your fog lights on and off, things like that, adjust the brightness of the display. Now the infotainment system, uh, pretty decent size screen here for your audio controls as well as hooking up to your phone. You also do have Wi-Fi, so you can use this OnStar and activate your Wi-Fi and then have the car basically be a hotspot for any devices you may have in it. Uh, you've got your simple climate control settings down here, all very basic, but I really like it. All very straightforward and simple to use. Uh, you've got your traction control button here, so if you just press this, you can turn off traction control. If you press it and hold, you will also turn off stability control. So there you can see that just went off. Uh, then also you've got heated seats, so for both the front passengers, and that's just a simple button right here in the center of each of these two dials. Now as far as storage, plenty of storage. You've got little compartments throughout. There's some here, some here in the door. You've got this little down here. Then you also have here, here. So you've got these two sections for the glove compartment. And then you have four cup holders up front, and you also have cup holders in the rear, so it's not like these are also for the rear. You have four cup holders, so plenty of space. Then you've also got this little compartment right here in front of the gear shift. You've got your power outlet right there. So a lot of space for all of your stuff. Uh, this thing, the emergency park brake, does seem a little bit cheap. It's kind of got this cover here that isn't really attached to anything. But aside from that, the interior is pretty straightforward, everything's simple to use, and I really do like the amount of storage compartments that it has. You also have one more storage compartment, which is underneath the front passenger seat. Now, as far as visibility is concerned, out the front and to the sides is very good. Now, looking out the back, it's a bit restricted as you have these large pillars back there, so that can make it a bit tricky. You will have a decent blind spot in that area, but you do have a reverse camera, and checking your blind spot here isn't too bad. So sitting in the rear, I have the front driver's seat adjusted to where I will be sitting. And as you can see, there actually is a decent amount of legroom. You can fit, you know, I'm six foot one and I do fit back here. Also a decent amount of space for my feet, which is nice. They don't feel too cramped in there and they've got a decent amount of height above them. You do have power windows back here and you also have a regular three prong outlet. So that's nice. And then in the center here, you can fold this down and you have two cup holders. Now, if I scooch over and sit in the center, uh, definitely a bit more cramped and, you know, headroom becomes more of a concern, but headroom when you aren't sitting in the center is actually pretty reasonable as well as leg room. Okay, let's go for a test drive. Now, one of the first things I noticed when driving this is that when you start it up, the backlight for the display doesn't automatically come on, which is a bit strange because you can't really read it without the backlight on. You can a little bit, uh, but when it's fairly bright outside, it makes it pretty difficult to read. And so there's two things that'll happen. You can either keep driving and eventually it just seems to turn on, or you can turn this little knob on the left uh, with the lights and then it'll turn on the backlit display and you can read everything fine. Not really sure why it does that and maybe there is a way to automatically have it come on but I haven't yet figured that out. Now this is a new car and a new segment for Chevy where they're trying to get into this world of small SUVs, um, basically kind of similar to the Nissan Juke, uh, this small crossover world and it's becoming increasingly popular. Other manufacturers are also coming out with new vehicles to enter in it. Mazda with the CX-3 and Honda with the HRV. And having driven the Nissan Juke, you know, I can directly compare these two. Uh, and, you know, where the Nissan Juke was fun to drive, but not all that practical, this is pretty much the opposite. It's actually very practical, uh, but not all that fun to drive. The Nissan Juke weighed a little bit less. The one I tested was about 160 pounds lighter and it also had about 50 more horsepower. Uh, so, you know, it was quick and nimble, whereas this really isn't as much, but 
This is larger in every dimension than the Nissan Juke, uh, length, width, and height. It has far more cargo space uh, and a lot more storage compartments. So it's a very practical car, uh, and I think ultimately that's what matters in a segment like this, not necessarily how fun to drive it is, which it's always nice to have a car that's fun to drive, but you know, ultimately you're not buying a Nissan Juke or a Chevy Trax or something like that because you know, you're an enthusiast that wants an awesome, incredible sports car. You know, you also want some practicality built in, and that's what this does very well. So, you know, you can fold down that front seat, you can fit four adults, and I think that's pretty great. Whereas, you know, in the Nissan Juke, you didn't have all that much storage space if you had the rear seats up. Now, driving dynamics of this, uh, both the accelerator pedal and the brake pedal kind of have this little dead zone uh, initially. And I don't want to really say dead zone because it does do something, but there's a good amount of travel in both pedals. And for both pedals, uh, that initial amount of travel doesn't really influence much of what you're doing so the brake pedal you've got a good amount of play before you start braking and the throttle pedal you've got a little bit of play before you start actually accelerating hard now that said I think both of the pedals feel pretty good once you get past that initial part and I actually think the brake pedal feels really good regardless uh, it has a nice amount of resistance that builds up as you press on it firmer and you know it correlates very well with how hard you're actually trying to brake and how hard you are braking through the corners, you know, you do have a good amount of body roll. It definitely does act like an SUV. You know, I mentioned the Nissan Juke kind of felt like a car when you were driving it around, and it did. This definitely does feel like an SUV. Not quite as composed, not quite as confidence inspiring as the Nissan Juke. But regardless, you know, it does have soft suspension. It is a comfortable ride, and it's actually pretty quiet. In fact, I think it is a decent amount quieter than the Nissan Juke that I was driving. Now you also do have manually selectable gears, which you can use the gear shift to do. There are not paddle shifters. Uh, you gotta use your hand down here on the gear shift and you can switch in between. Now this little 1.4 liter, you know, you're not gonna get uh, incredibly quick acceleration times. You put your foot down and you know, it accelerates, but at a decently slow rate. Probably one of the slower vehicles I've tested. But, you know, if someone were to ask me, do I think this car needs more power? Uh, no, I don't actually, you know, and the reason being is because it gets really good fuel economy So compared to the Nissan Juke it has two miles per gallon better EPA uh, Highway rating and two worse in the city. So about the same fuel economy uh, Even though it is a little bit larger and a little bit heavier So that's pretty impressive in my own testing it did a little bit worse than the Nissan Juke But regardless it got very good fuel economy numbers and I do think it's enough power to get you around. I mean, if you've got other people in the car, you know, it might start to feel a bit slow, but ultimately I feel like it's sufficient for what this car is aiming to be and what it's trying to do. And that's just this really practical small SUV that gets solid fuel economy. So I've completed my fuel economy test course, approximately 53 miles with some city and hills mixed in with primarily highway. Now this car is rated 26 in the city, 34 in the highway. And as you can see, it achieved 38.1 miles per gallon. So pretty good fuel economy out of this 1.4 liter. Okay, let's get a quick highway pull in from a stop, foot down. So driving on the highway, I've got the cruise control set at 65. You know, actually not too bad as far as noise in here. A little bit of tire noise. Most of what you hear seems to be a wind noise, uh, but it actually is pretty quiet. I did take a decibel reading and it was looking like about 76, 77 decibels. And this is a pretty rough highway, so not too bad. Uh, and actually a little bit under what I tested for the Nissan Juke. Ultimately, I find this to be a very practical uh, small SUV, which you can actually fit adults in, and you can actually fit a decent amount of cargo in uh, at a reasonable price, regardless of the fact that you know the engine isn't all that potent. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.